Hi, I'm scientist Rachel, and I am here with my three scientists from the town of Mead, Colorado. I have scientist Buddy, he's the brown dog, scientist Sunny, he's the yellow dog, and scientist Jack. We are still in grade four, uh, waves, energy, and inf information. Today we're in chapter one, lesson two. You're going to need something to write with and something to write on. So the superintendent at Blue Bay National Park wanted us to help figure out how a mother dolphin can communicate with her calf across a distance. That's the lesson we did yesterday. Um, in order to figure out or investigate how dolphins communicate, we're going to have to read a reference book. And a reference book is a special kind of book. It's not something that you read cover to cover. You just find the section or the topic that you're looking for, and that's what you're reading. So we're going to figure out, since we're asking the question of how does a mother dolphin communicate with her calves, we're going to go to the section that says communication. So the very first um, book page you're reading is page four, introduction using patterns to communicate. As young children, we learn to identify certain sounds with certain types of animals. For example, cows make mooing sounds and ducks make quacking sounds. In reality, though, it's much more complicated than that. Ducks don't just make quacking sounds, they make many different sounds, and those sounds have many different meanings that other ducks can understand. A duck's body movement can send messages, too. As they move and make sounds, animals use specific patterns to communicate with one another. For instance, Many birds bob their heads up or down or flap their wings in patterns that tell other birds they are looking for a mate. Many marine mammals use different patterns of sounds to keep track of one another in the ocean. Insects use patterns of sound, motion, and even scent to communicate. Like other animals, humans also use patterns to communicate. Human languages use patterns of words and sounds that convey meaning. This book explores how different animals use patterns to communicate, and it has four sections. Marine mammal communication, bird communication, insect communication, and human communication. These are just a few interesting examples of animal communication. Other animals use patterns to communicate too. In fact, Almost any animal you can imagine communicates with patterns of some kind. Information that travels as waves. For communication to happen, information has to pass from an animal to one or more other animals. Sometimes the information passes directly through touch, but other times it has to travel across a distance. In most cases, that information travels at waves. When you think of a wave, you might think of a wave in the ocean or a lake. That's just one type of wave, but there are many other kinds of waves, such as light waves, sound waves, and waves that carry electrical signals. A wave is a pattern of motion and can carry information from one place to another. When a dog wags its tail, it is sending a visual signal to other dogs. That visual signal travels as light waves. When a dolphin makes a sound, that sound travels as sound waves. When you send a text message, that signal travels as waves that carry electrical signals. So on page six, it said sound travels um, as a kind of a wave. It can carry information. So I'm going to read that part again. It said, when a dolphin makes a sound, that sound travels as sound waves. So the big unit question that we're going to figure out that we're going to be able to answer at the end of all of our lessons are, the question is, how do waves transfer information from one place to another? But before we can even begin to answer that big unit question, there's another question we need to figure out. How does sound get from one place to another? We're going to make um, different waves today with uh, two different ways. One is going to be a rope and one's going to be a spring. So if you have a jump rope or a shoelace would work or any kind of rope, you can make the wave with me. Or if you have a slinky toy, that would work too. So here we go. Watch 
how um, my hand is moving the rope. So how does the rope move when the wave is being made and how do the waves start? Okay. So with the spring toy, how does it move when we're making the wave? And where do the waves start? If I were to draw out those waves, um, this is what wave A would look like. And so it's going, right? There's motion there. And then wave B is doing a different kind of motion. So how is wave A moving? Scientist Sunny said the wave A is moving back and forth, but scientist Buddy is saying that wave A is moving up and down. So who's right? Scientist Sunny, that wave, wave A, is moving back and forth, back and forth. So is rope A moving more like the spring toy or the rope wave? Scientist Buddy said it looks like the rope, but Scientist Sunny is saying, I think that's the spring toy. So drum roll. Scientist Sunny is correct. It's a spring toy. Wave A is going back and forth, back and forth, just like the spring was. So wave B, how is wave B moving? Scientist Sunny said it's going back and forth. Scientist Buddy said the um, wave B is going up and down. Let's see who's right. Scientist Buddy is correct. That wave is going up and down, up and down. So is wave B, does it, is it more like the spring tort or the rope wave? Scientist Buddy said he thinks it's the rope wave and Scientist Sunny said he thinks it's the spring toy wave. So drum roll. <laughs> Scientist Buddy is correct. That wave, because it's moving up and down, it looks more like the rope. We're gonna learn a new vocabulary word today. It's called, the word is source. Source means the place where something comes from. Um, other words you can say that's, that would be like source are start or begin. But because we're scientists, we're gonna use a scientific word of source. So again, the place where something comes from. What is the source of the waves? Scientist Buddy said the wave the, the waves, um, the source is the wind. Scientist Jack says the source of the waves is a hand. Scientist Sunny says the source of the waves is a wave. So drum roll, who, which scientist is correct? Scientist Jack is correct. The hands start the wave. So they're the source of both the waves when they're back and forth and when they're going up and down. And this is the end of our lesson today. Thank you so much for hanging out with me, Scientist Rachel, and my three scientist friends, Sunny, Buddy, and Jack. And we will see you hopefully tomorrow.